So, um, we are happy to announce that uh, we spent the evening yesterday to <laughs> the final steps on a release candidate for XS 2.2, which has been uploaded around midnight, maybe a little bit, a little bit later. But um, I hope that since well, we were six people testing the final packaging, um, it's really uh, not a disadvantage that this happens. But, um, well, anyway, I would just like to highlight some of the things we have been working at during the past uh, six months or so. Yeah, I think two or one was in August. So. Um, there are two major new features in there. First is the new redesigned range index. We talked about this in the morning. For those who were not there, uh, we saw that <coughs> in the new range index, we can get performance increase, uh, um, a performance increase um, well, between 10 and even 100 times. So we saw an example that where we're taking two seconds on the old index went down to 100 milliseconds. So that's all possible uh, with this new range index, which is really able to look up uh, complex expressions um, with one single um, access to the index. Um, so I think this is a major step forward for exist and uh, well, the reason we do release candidate here is that it's now time to really get more feedback about this. Um, those features have been used in production by some people for a while, so we're quite sure they, they, they do work as expected, but uh, we just see people testing in different scenarios to figure out where maybe uh, problems are which we couldn't see before. So the next major feature in there, which is also behind the scenes, but I think those behind the scenes changes are, yeah, even though not um, very, very visible, uh, they are very important um, because people are storing more and more data into Exist, so we really have to um, make sure that uh, yeah, this, this increase in data size and so on is properly met. Um, so the second topic is about crash recovery. I mean, Exist had crash uh, recovery uh, mechanism since, <coughs> since quite a while, I think since 2007 or but, um, well, there were some limitations which uh, now more and more became important because we have customers deploying applications on dozens of uh, yeah, systems um, and they do have, have no control over their, those systems. Yeah. So um, we had cases where well, there were just power outages or people uh, killing the hard drive, uh, things like that. So, in many cases, you, you just don't know what your customer is, is doing when it says and where he deploys it and if everything is correct here. And in those cases, it's very important that if anything goes wrong, um, the database is always coming up properly again and uh, you don't want to have uh, large delays. Um, so, in the end, I rewrote uh, large parts of the crash recovery code um, to first make it more reliable and second to also get back online faster. Um, there are still further steps to go from here. So while we uh, could spin up the recovery process in itself, um, there's still the indexing which causes a delay and that's uh, on the plan, on the agenda, as the next step. But this one was really the, the requirement to continue down the path. So, yeah, well, crash recovery um, right now has become better because uh, we could get rid of lots of the stuff we previously had to store into the transaction journal. So the whole locking got uh, simpler, which also means yeah, if things become simpler in, in the code, then there are less possibilities for things to go wrong. So um, the whole process has become much more reliable. 
and uh, I had some people really doing more tests on, on, on this feature, so uh, the company with those uh, 20 uh, or 50 deployments, and um, we really uh, stored lots of data, did kill minus nine, tried to get the phone up again, and so on. And uh, whereas previously it would fail, uh, I don't know, one time out of a thousand or so, where there were issues left somehow. <coughs> um, but the new crash recovery code worked uh, every time. So uh, we had quite good uh, recovery rates, even from really bad, bad uh, crash situations. Um, so there's lots of improvement there. Um, then a feature which, which is not that visible at <coughs> all, but I, I think it's really a big step forward, is uh, JMS replication and messaging bounce bit. Uh, JMS replication is important if uh, yeah, you just have large databases running and uh, you cannot really um, <laughs> back up them properly anymore because they are used all the time. And um, you have to do that uh, besides uh, processing normal requests. So JMS is a, is a good alternative there because it continuously sends change messages to other existing instances, which could then do back up <coughs> if um, they are idle. And you could also use it for things like uh, failover um, or just if you have heavy uh, traffic on a, on a site, and you could do some parallelization. Those are all things which have already done by customers uh, of us and very, was very successful. Um, well, Adam Wilson talked about the security feature, so security got even better and better. And well, finally, there were lots of critical bug fixes um, and performance improvements since the last three years. So, uh, it's, it's really, um, yeah, there were some, some things on the performance side which, which could severely, uh, severely limit performance. And uh, there were also some, some bugs in, in how it just starts off with the weather and stuff like that, which um, are really important. So we have also changed our um, our release um, plans a bit. So I mean, previously we always said uh, even releases are stable, um, or releases are unstable, or the other way around, I don't know. But we somehow are trying to get uh, to get towards uh, releasing more often. So um, having all those those versions. Well, before 2.0, the problem already was that we had lots of people running, I don't know, 1.4 or even 1.3, yeah? And um, this was, those versions were years old and quite limited. And uh, when people reported problems with those versions, it was hard for us to, to somehow help them. And at the same time, the problem was that we couldn't get 2.0, 2.1 out because they were still features in their um, not production ready. So we decided to somehow rearrange our release policy a bit and um, go with this well, to release more often. Um, so we also well, tried to, to improve the situation for our, our commercial customers because there uh, the problem also is um, commercial customers we have, uh, they're using a stable version. So back then it was 1.4, now it's uh, 2.1. Um, and you fix a bug for them, and then well, how do they get it? Well, they have to, to drag the source code from development branch, yeah, build from there, uh, start testing, and in the end, development code ends up on production server. Um, that's not what we want. It, it, has caused some mess, yeah. So we decided to split and um, <coughs> to split between uh, major releases, which are all free and open source, as 
um, it has always been, and we are trying to get them out more often. So not, not one every year, but at least two every year, maybe four if possible. And I think the move to, to Git has, has made that much easier for us as well. So major releases um, always include new features. Uh, we do not guarantee their backwards from that. So usually you have to do a, a risk backup restore to get your data up to the new format, which may be used internally. Um, on the x side, things should always be backwards compatible somehow, but there are changes um, because the specification changes over time, which may create queries, and that's possible for major reasons. For people really running uh, exists in production, we introduced uh, our LTS subscriptions. LTS stands for long-term support. And what we mean by that is that we guarantee to maintain each um, major release for two years. Okay. So basically, LTS releases are the same as the major releases, but we continuously um, support bug fixes and critical fixes from um, existing development back into the LTS branch. Yeah. So if you decide to start um, a project using uh, 2.2 or 2.1, it's unstable, um, you can be sure that you will always get the latest critical bug fixes um, without uh, having to, to, to upgrade or anything. So all those releases will be backward from that. And the goal is just to give um, commercial developers a, a reliable foundation to start a project with. Because as I said previously, the problem has always been that um, commercial users at some point update the development branch and then yeah, things may start to get difficult. Okay, and then finally, um, there's also an option which you can find on our homepage to extend um, the LTS with, with the service level agreement, which then gives the, um, the, usual, the usual advantages you expect, like quick uh, issue resolution guarantee response times. And what we also changed there is uh, previously we limited this to existing B, so uh, really just for pieces and the Xperia engine and all that. But we think that's, that's nonsense because in, in reality, most of our customers, well, they develop an application and they don't know what kind of question they think of, what kind of problem they will have. Yeah? So they, they often ask about performance, optimizations, tuning, and all that stuff. Yeah? So we said, okay, we, we drop those limitations. And basically, if you have an SLA, can ask any question you want as long as it is somehow related to it and the, the framework it provides will try our best to answer and handle. Okay, thank you.